Test one, two. Ah, test one. Da, 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 Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Good to be back. My name is Dean. My friend Lachlan Cross is here again today. At Lachlan Cross on Twitter is where you can find him. He's wearing his Support Local Glory Holes shirt. You can get all kinds of really weird merch you never want to be seen in at the Locker Room merch page, as a matter of fact. So check it You're out. You're welcome. Someone's, thank you. Someone scanned Send me a note. Local. I'll send you the link. Yeah, that'd be nice. Good for you. Looks good. You look nice today. Your dog is in the back. Uh, he's getting ready to have a nap. If you are watching this on YouTube, you can cry or media on YouTube. You can also I get think a... he's licking his balls. No, he's not. He's licking his. He's not Taint. licking. Taint. No, he's licking his taint. Yeah. What? No, if it, no, he's not. He's dogs have a have a go at that every once in a while. The taint. They do. Yeah. <laughs> lie down, King Man. King Man, yeah, lie there down. He is. There he Good is. Boy. See, there he is. He said. No, see, he's not doing any of the things you just said he's doing. You tried to say that he was he licking was, his game because he, he can. He was. No, he was, and he was licking his leg. Anyway, I'm just glad he's in the shot. Nice to see you. How are you today? I'm good. I'm yeah. actually feeling pretty decent for a good Friday. Yeah, not bad. It is good Friday. Um, unless, of course, you were the Christ, then not a great Friday. Um, but uh, what happened sober. there? Not, is uh, today yeah, is, uh, today is when they're like, hey, you're going up on the cross, fella. Yeah. Yeah. So then Monday, Monday he comes back alive. I, I, according to urban legend, yes. And he's yeah. doing dinner parties the following week. No, he spent a couple weeks kind of walking around, and then he got on some kind of cloud airship and went up into the heavens. Oh, Monday, okay. Or the Sunday. All right. Not even okay. too sure, but I might yeah. need to read that book someday to figure this whole thing out. I, I would stay away from it. Okay. Done. You're talking about the Bible. You talked me itself? into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Good Friday. This is a long weekend for everybody, depending on your faith. We got Ramadan going on. We got Good Friday going on. Uh, I am not a religious person by any stretch of the imagination, either are you, but it, it's it, it's beholden upon us to recognize it as secular individuals wishing, uh, no matter who you are and where you're from, a wonderful weekend. How does that I'm against sound? religion, I believe in faith. If you have you something that you need that gets yeah. you through the day, whatever it is, for me, it's yeah. alcohol. Yeah. Um, then you you do that. You do you. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, no one, no one's gonna judge you here. No one's gonna judge you and your your core beliefs. Uh, no one judges anybody's speech here. We allow people to do their thing, which is why I'm really excited for today's show. Uh the last couple of weeks since Lachlan has been uh, uh happily unemployed uh in the real world and self-employed in this world, we've spent significant amount of time getting to know some of the people that were on the locker room which was the morning yes. show they used to do on the radio station that you just left in in edmonton alberta it was a heritage morning show big morning show yeah one of the things you did is you curated relationships with like incredible personalities yes and we've met some of them recently mad mike hughes was great uh even some of our new clients like your friends at ardent roofing partners and sponsors of the locker room retro replay of the day just a lovely guy talked about how to help kids at stollery uh children's hospital uh, yep. But very interesting. Yesterday, uh, massive damage from Monster Pro Wrestling, who was just Good guy. beautiful, wonderful, yep. rough edges, kind, loving. But you, 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 you have a really unique set of relationships in Edmonton, right? I, I do. And when you're in our business, uh, yeah. Well, we meet the people that you have relationships based on your time on the radio in Edmonton at the Edge, which is like Canada, one of Canada's biggest radio stations, we continue to meet the the people that you spent time with during your 15 years there before they shit canned you. Mm -hmm. um, so today and this week has been no exception. We've a number of the people that we introduced you to have since passed on and are hanging out with uh, whoever in the afterlife. Uh, these two individuals are still still hanging in there. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to be doing a show with me. Um called Grease Fire, which is a cooking show, and we're filming our first episode today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mel, Dark Side of the Grill, and Aaron from Meat. Yeah, there you go. Aaron from Meat, Mel Schmiller from Dark Side of the Grill. There's Aaron from the restaurant Meat. He's fully bearded. He looks like he is absolutely from Edmonton, Alberta. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> of the earth. And then his buddy, Mel Schmiller, who joins us. He's been on the show before. Dark Side of the Grill, Mel's back. How we doing, baby? How we doing? <laughs> Ah, uh, look at this crew. Look at this crew. I want to get to Grease Fire in just a second, but can we just acknowledge the fact that Mel Schmiller, world famous barbecue guy, 
just rolled out of bed, threw on a fucking leopard print robe like he doesn't give an <laughs> F, and he's like, I'm wow. here for the whole thing. This Welcome. is it, babe. This is this is it. You, I'm usually naked until noon, so <laughs> you <get what> you <laughs> are you a naked sleeper, Mel? Oh, I you one very of much yeah. so, yeah. 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 I was, we, I, you know, it's we, funny. I get challenged we, um, to be a naked sleeper, and I'm like, I can't do it just in case there's a fire. I don't want to run outside. But like in my mind, I'm like, there's going to be a fire. I'm going to get robbed and run outside. <laughs> my little dinger is going to be all over there for people to see. I live in a very multicultural <laughs> neighborhood, so everybody will have a phone out. And my wiener, my little tiny wiener, will be all over the internet. So that's why I wear clothes to bed. Uh, so now that I know where you're located, I can I can say <laughs> I, I've been sleeping naked in a hot tub in Oshawa just months ago. So this is, yeah. The dirty schwa, baby. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, <laughs> the thing is, we I, I don't know how much we want to dig into um, Mel's like habits because we like love could of get, nudity. Yeah. Well, there's just there's some other things that that <laughs> might creep into this conversation. Like what? I, we were all well, friends I'm, here, right? Okay. Well, I will say this. I've been to Mel's house a couple of times, and once I actually. Um, took a chance and went into the basement, which you learn a lot about somebody when you go to their basement. Yeah. And Mel <laughs> has a number of collections that, let's just say, might disturb most red-blooded humans. Like, for some reason, he really likes stiletto high heels, and he has about 300 pairs hanging on the wall, all of which fit him. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So if there is a fire in the south end of Edmonton, That's you it. might see Mel <laughs> naked, but running down the street in a pair of high heels. That's it. <laughs> okay. I would pay good money to see that. That'd be <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> Aaron, so would a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the leopard print robe makes a little more sense this morning. <laughs> uh, is that true? You got a bunch of like you collect stiletto, high heel stilettos in your size? No, I collect ex wives. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> so, well, however, you need to put it, um, you know. Yeah. Why, do those, why, why do all those shoes fit you? Why do those shoes fit you? He likes his steak done this way. He likes, you know, we're not getting into it, but. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I want to get into it. That's why, because you guys are about to do a television show. You guys are recording this TV show. And, yes. it, you know, it's funny because when Lachlan got fired, do you guys remember that? That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, he's wow, wow. He, Prior to getting fired, he starts telling me, he's like, hey, listen, I'm going to work with Mel Schmiller. And I go, what are you doing with Mel? I love Mel. And he goes, I don't think he likes you that much. And I go, that's okay. A lot of people don't like me. I still like Mel. And he's like, yeah, okay. If you can drop the anti-vax stuff, he might like you. And I go, Hey, listen, I, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I don't care. I've never are vaxxer. I don't care what anybody does with their life. And he's like, okay, are you going to be able to work with Mel? I go, it's a life dream to work with a guy that's that good at something specifically <laughs> cooking meat. I don't care what his ideological views are. I don't think he's going to care what mine are either. And he's like, good. Cause we brought this guy in for meat and we're doing this TV show called grease fire. And then I started looking in because I love Mel Schmiller. I do. I love everything about you. I love your gear. I love your hair. I love the way you're fucking unabashedly yourself. And then he introduced me to Aaron's restaurant, Meat. And I'm like, wait a second. The restaurant's just called Meat? He goes, yeah. yeah. And then I started looking <laughs> at what Aaron does. And I'm like, what they serve. I'm moving to fucking Alberta to do content <laughs> yeah. from now on. No, it's, I, Fuck, I, yeah, I, that's awesome. I'm going to say, with all honesty, the last day I had welding, um, yeah. when I finally walked away from my, my longtime career, uh, the next day, the first thing I did at 11 a.m. was I went to meet. I had one slice of brisket with a pickle and a shot of Old Pappy 23. And that was that was my goodbye. And that was the first thing I did was I went straight to meet because mm -hmm. that was the next, you know, alley that I was going down. It was just perfect. It was it was the start of my Ferris Bueller's day off. The That's day cool. was insane. I ended up throwing up in a dumpster somewhere, but <laughs> the, the beginning of the day was fantastic, right? It was just beautiful, but it was kind of poetic that that was the first day of the rest of my life was spent just like that. So Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, dude, and that, this is what I want to talk about because we'll get to the, the show Grease Fire in just a second, but Aaron, um, you know, we're, we're on the phone with and we're talking to business guys. We're talking to guys that love what they do. 
right? And it, and it makes sense because Lachlan has no idea how to cook. He wants to create content in this space. He loves barbecue. He's talked about you guys for a long period of time. And now he's in that space too, where he's got to be autonomous, right? Like he's got to be, he's got to be his own business guy, right? And, and this is what he's doing now. And he's working with other people. And you know how this space works. Like you get together with people you have like-minded interests with. Um, so what on earth and why on earth are two successful business guys working with an unemployed radio dude now? <laughs> Uh, natural progression, I think. Uh, yeah, well, um, you know, I had the opportunity to meet Lachlan and, uh, a few months back when uh, Mel and I did a collaboration at Meet. We did a little uh, uh, collaboration with his Heartbeat Hot Sauce and uh, Wings produced by us. And uh, that's how I met the guy. He had me on the show a couple times. And I'm like, you know what? This guy is actually kind of fucking cool. So... Let's uh, hang out and cook some meat and uh, shoot the shit and drink some sea change, shameless plug. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah. What's the premise behind it, Locke? Do you want to tell me how this whole thing came about and what the well, deal is? Because you're like the even, odd man out here. These guys know what filmed, they're doing and I love you, but you you don't. And I, and I, I haven't got a learn. clue. Like, yeah, exactly. dude, I know how to make sandwiches. Yeah. So um, the, the concept is basically very simple. These two are going to try to make a cook out of me. And we're, we're just going to, we're going to try some different things and we're going to see where it goes. And we're filming the first one tonight. So, um, by the way, I have about 18 people now that want to come down. Mel, you're going to have to put some chairs out. Don't you dare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Most of your friends aren't even litter trained, man. Don't you dare. That's <laughs> Jimmy can't make it. Yeah, Jimmy exactly. is so, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I, you know what? I'd like to ask Aaron a, a question because I know his history. So he went to culinary school in Vancouver, ended up in um, in Australia for, for a short period of time, and then made his way back. Were you at the grand opening? Like, were you the at the front end of the opening of meat, Aaron, in Edmonton? Uh, no, actually, I wasn't. Um, I actually just moved back to Australia, uh, from Australia, pardon me. And, uh, yeah, it was about nine months too late. And, uh, but yeah, I got hired as a cook there three months later at the gig Sioux. And, uh, yeah, about a year after that, I'm running the business and, uh, it's all been history since then. So it's 10 years now, right? At meat. Uh, me will be open for 10 years and, uh, it'll be my nine year anniversary actually at the end of April. So. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Very get any yeah. blowback? You get any blowback for naming your restaurant meat? Because there's a place here in oh. Toronto that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I don't want. Oh to yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, not so bad anymore, but like especially at the beginning, we had so many protesters come outside, like from PETA and like all these different organizations. Meat is murder. You know, harassing our customers, all of that kind of stuff. Seriously, and, uh, like coming in another yeah. restaurant, you have people look at Mel shaking his head oh, like yeah. he's ready to 100%. fight all of them. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and we actually uh, had a couple of customers like kick them out. They're like, "How dare you? Like, we are making our decision. You're making your decision. But like, honestly, fuck off and let us enjoy." Yeah, you well, know? that'd be that'd and, be a strong move now if they were protesting now because uh, yeah. me, like Dean is packed every yeah. night. There's, yeah. and on the weekends, there's a lineup. Like, yeah. it, it, like we, we talked, Aaron's like, uh, we don't advertise. We, we can't, we yeah, can't totally. handle the traffic we got. Like, honestly, like we're too busy, just word of mouth in the community. Everyone loves us. So we're like, why do we need to advertise? It doesn't really make sense for us. You don't, you, know? you, you don't go down there and protest in front of meat now. Like it's not the audience that you want to. No. <laughs> it's going to be a bad day for you. Yeah. Well, it, it, that was okay. funny because it was like six or seven years ago. They opened up this place in Toronto called Antler. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. And we may have even talked about it with you, Mel. Um, and the dude, the dude that opened it up, he's like, you know, organic meat from all over the world. You've got kangaroo, you got bison, you've got venison, you've got all kinds of things. It's meat eaters. It's, it's sustenance. It's protein. It's like, it's like fuck, we've been doing it for thousands of years for Christ's sake. And, and I remember when it opened up, Blog TO put out this this thing. It's like, hey, this guy opened up a meat restaurant called Antler, and and uh, vegans are pissed. And it's always the same, same asshole, right? It's always the same person who wants to go and tell you what to eat, what to wear. And he's probably wearing a leather belt, and there's probably leather in his shoes. And he's like, I can't believe you're eating meat. And you're like, fuck, dude, 
shut up. Like, like go somewhere else. Leave me alone. Let me dine in peace. But it's amazing because it's Edmonton. And that's why I asked. I'm like, if, if there's any place you can open up a meat only restaurant. There you go. Look at that. What do you got there? <laughs> meat. What does that say? Meat stock. But it's, oh, it's yeah. literally the from the Pam Anderson pita. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. yeah. I didn't know you had that. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't that antler guy like <laughs> s- like dress something in the front window? Yeah, and this is what he did, and this is what I'm asking you, Aaron, if this is something that you've done too, just to kind of keep people at bay. He's like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna carve up a carve up a lamb in the window and cook it. <laughs> <laughs> in front uh, of honestly, everybody. honestly, like the smell of the amazing smoke coming from my restaurant. I, yeah. That seems to have worked pretty good, you know. People smell that uh, roasting, smoking flesh from the smoker itself, and it's been doing a pretty good job so far about, uh, you know, keeping the unwanted out of our restaurant. Yeah. So when you, when they actually had the concept, Aaron, uh, I want to talk to to Mel here about Dark Side of the Grill and and what he does. But uh, one last thing about meat, and then we, that we can pivot and move on. But when that that restaurant was built and it's like, if you know where it is, it's just off of white Ab. It's in a fairly Strathcona. It's in a fairly populated area. Um, you guys, you're self-contained. So the restaurant is, is, is on the front. There's a patio in the summer. We usually sit on the patio and have beers and, and, and whatnot. And then, you know, dine, but your, your smokers and everything that you guys need to, supply the restaurant with the food for the menu is all in that, in that space. So that, that's yeah, an interesting that's, concept, right? Like, yeah, for sure. Well, like, I mean, we've got all the HVAC and all that, so we can, you know, not smoke out the restaurant. Um, but every once in a while, when you open those smoker doors, it does like to, uh, you know, get that aroma going, but, yeah. uh, yeah, it's all self-contained. Um, Great place. the smoker that we use is an old hickory pit. And uh, it is absolutely amazing. Holds 700 pounds of meat. It works on like a ro- uh, rotisserie type style. And uh, yeah, it's it's actually pretty amazing that we have that large of a unit like inside yeah. our building. And uh, yeah, if you come up to the past, you can see it. You can check it out. Like I know, uh, uh, Lachlan, you went to come uh, check it out one of the times that you were in. But uh you we got too drunk. You couldn't. You, you decided it was yes. <laughs> it was a good idea that we we postponed the tour. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. But that's okay. We'll we'll catch you before you get too drunk next that's time. That's probably a good then idea. I, then right? I'll give you the full tour. <laughs> when I sit down on the patio and I start drinking sea change, I like you know three or four in, then it's that's it. Then we're then we're going to Mel's place. Right. Yeah. And then it's a day. <laughs> Trying on stilettos. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. So, yeah. Dark side uh, of the grill. Um, for those of you who don't know Mel, we had him on last year and we we had barbecue tips. Now, Mel, um, quite a few years ago, went out on his own. And if you follow him on Instagram, he is unbelievable at keeping everybody up to date with uh, with his absolutely insane life. Um, and I, my question for you, Mel, is at what point... like. I, listen, you didn't just all of a sudden one day decide you were going to quit welding and quit a six-figure paying job and then just go out on your own and barbecue. You probably started doing this quite some time ago. So when did you get into barbecue? So um, natural progression for, for most guys, I, I don't know. You're around the barbecue, right? I, I being Ukrainian, first of all, I grew up in the kitchen because that's Ukrainians are always eating, right, and always cooking. So, uh, cooking was number one. I cooked like even as a child, I would start learning how to cook dinner and stuff like that. Um, as soon as I was old enough to play with the barbecue, my dad couldn't cook worth a damn, right? So, um, as soon as I found out that like pork chops had fluid in them, right. And that roasts didn't have to be rock solid or burgers didn't have to be hockey pucks. I took over the grill. And then uh, being being uh, a welder in Edmonton, right, bought my first house when I was 18. So I was out on my own. All of the rig pigs, everybody that I, I was friends with would come over because they still lived at home. And the deal was you bring a case of beer and a sack of meat and that's what we do. Like 
all the time. There was always a grill going, always cooking. Um, guys would be leaving on like say a 20, 28 day hitch and they'd come back. They'd want a party. And I happen to have a place where that's exactly what we do. So I was constantly cooking, constantly doing that. I ended up starting to uh, cook for the boys at the shop. So we'd end up doing, you know, there's 200 people there. I'd do lunch for 200 people, getting into briskets and stuff like that, cooking for that many people. And then that's when the internet, the whole Instagram thing started. Uh, One of the kids that actually worked in the wash bay, I caught him taking pictures of my, my brisket and stuff like that. And this is years ago. And I, I, I said, like, hey, what are, you, what are you doing? Like, it's really weird that you just, instead of digging in like everybody else, you're in the corner taking pictures. He's like, yeah, I put this stuff on Instagram. There's a whole community of people that are, and I said, Instagram is for 16-year-old girls to jump around in front of a camera. Like, what are you talking about? Instagram, right? Welder, I don't know anything about. I had a shared Facebook account, which I never went on because I could care less, right? I was not an internet, whatever. And three months later, um, Big Green Egg flew me out to Atlanta. I started cooking with head chefs around the world. And it's just been an absolute monster and a snowball ever since. So there's no stopping that freight train. In a in the Grease Fire one sheet that we've been sending to, to people to get them interested in sponsorship. By the way, send me a note if you'd like to have a look at it. I, I made a comment, and, and I think I'm not too far from the truth. Listen, I know you've been doing it for a long time, but some people are just touched by, 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 uh, by something, and they're they just they have a skill, and I and I I think there's some sort of a crossroads or a Jimi Hendrix thing or a Robert Johnson thing with Mel and and barbecue. Because if if you've had, I mean, Aaron's a, a, an unbelievable chef, and and there's a reason why they gave him the reins to meets. And if you go to meets. Like they've got it down. Like it's unbelievable. Mel is in that same category where when you when you go over to his place and he cooks for you, you just go, like, what how did you why is this so different than mine? Why why does this taste so much better? (laughs) And when he travels around the world to these to these barbecue things, which he's being invited to, he's being paid to go to these places to make it. He just got back from Australia, right? Yeah, meat stock. Yeah. There's a reason why he keeps winning these challenges and things like that. So there's something happened. Like I said, you made some deal. I don't know. Yeah. With the devil. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. that's what grease fire is. Is two guys who really know what they're doing, who are gifted, who are touched by the barbecue gods, the meat gods. And then there's you. That's uh, it. Who left, a, <laughs> who left an if you look behind my barbecue at the, my house, if night. you look yeah. behind my barbecue at my house, the, the siding is warped. <laughs> and actually oh, a, a little bit stained because occasionally I'll get too drunk, won't pay attention, yeah. and the flames will lick the side of the building. Well, I can't wait thing. until we I can't wait until we shoot an episode there. We're gonna light that house on fire, baby. That's gonna be- <laughs> yeah. So here, here's the question. Um, because I, I said this to my girlfriend the other day. We were talking about she fancies herself as quite the barbecue. And I'm like, you know what? It, it, you've had to practice. I think it's just, we're, men are kind of born with that, like, you know, ability to cook on an open flame. And she took great offense to it. I was a misogynist. We didn't talk for the next two hours, yep. which I totally get. I understand that. I'm like, no. But she takes it very seriously. Her barbecue Small skills break. very seriously. Uh, is this something that you have to practice like everybody else? Or as a man, this is a very serious question. Are we just born with better barbecue DNA than everybody else? Because I would say here. both. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely both. Absolutely. Like, for sure. I mean, I've got a similar story to Mel. Uh, you know, watching uh, Dad, you know, torch everything. This is probably not a good example. But just, like, having it, um, you know, ingrained in my DNA uh, that I'm just like, no, I know how to do this. I know how to do this properly. And also as well, you know, learn skill also. My, uh, most of my career, I was actually in steakhouses, right? And so I've been like on that grill for many, many years. And, uh, you know, uh, kind of going back to that natural progression thing, like that's where, you know, barbecue came for me, like uh, shortly after that. Hmm. Yeah, was that, yeah. like, and did you fall in love with it or were you a cook guy? Because like, like that's the difference between barbecue guys, like, Barbecue, there are some barbecue guys that can also cook, but a lot of Mm -hmm. barbecue guys like you guys, like barbecue chefs, are just barbecue guys, right? Is there a difference? Can you guys both cook? These guys both cook. They cook everything. Like, it's it's pretty insane to hear them having a conversation. Like, just even the text back and forth about preparing the menu for the the first shoot. 
Yeah. And I'm going to bring this and then and chimichurri this and then anyway, it, it's, it's, they know what they're doing and there's, I, there's a real science to it as well. Anyway, I, I, I wanted to jump in there. Sorry guys. Well, for, for me being on the, the meat trail all the time and meeting all kinds of people in every walk of life that, that do barbecue and cook live fire, I, I guess the best way that I could explain it is like uh, your girlfriend or your fiance or your wife, whatever, like, does she like to speed when she drives? Is she a bit of a speed demon? Because a lot of people aren't, but some people are. I think yeah. cooking with live fire, cooking with a barbecue is a lot like that. Some people have it. Some people don't. I think you're it's born with analogy. it. It's just in there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you are, yeah, yeah, you're, you you kind of like the violence of cooking over an open flame too, don't it's, you? And that's, the, man, I, I know so many ladies that are quiet. Um, Tina Cannon, she won, I, I forget, American Barbecue Brawl or something. She wears a, a pearl necklace and she's like 65, right? And still amazing, amazing over the open fire, amazing over barbecue, huh. just wild. And that's, you'd never expect her to be that, you know, stereotypical person. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there she is with just a gigantic rack of ribs, <laughs> tossing it on the grill. And it's like, wow, that, that but she's really good at it. So yeah, she's really good kind of at it. Well, Turns yeah. you on a little. Yeah, kind there of you go. Right. Exactly. Like I watched that glimmer in your eye where you're talking about the 65 year old barbecue woman. <laughs> kind of get a lot easier to catch. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a I have a bit of a pivot here. Um, I was telling Dean, and I don't really know the story, Mel, but I remember one time over drinks. You kind of, and Mel knows a lot of very interesting characters and we don't need to get into it, but also, uh, you know, still hangs out with some very interesting people from all walks of life. Um, and I don't know how the hell this came up, but we were talking about the maple syrup mafia in yeah. Canada. And Mel said, I will never have an issue getting maple syrup. Yes. And then there was a conversation about, you know, bodies and and, and that kind of a thing. And, and well, I read something, dude. I read something this shoes. week. To your point, I read something this week about the maple syrup. Uh, have us having like stockpile issues with maple syrup. And and at the end of every one of those maple syrup stories I read this week, it's like, and the consortium of maple syrup management. And I'm like, oh, the syrup mob. No, not many people know Canada has a syrup mob. And apparently, Mel. You're involved in it. Tell us more. I I have a French connection, someone from <laughs> Quebec uh, that lives here in Edmonton. Uh, yeah. He's a machinist, and yeah. at any given time, I can access at least three, four hundred gallons of syrup at any given time. <laughs> it's just I'm not saying it's on his premises, but it's on his premises, and I get it wholesale. Um, I don't know if it was dr driven up here with Harley Davidsons or how they worked it out, but. <laughs> I, I know that the big heist, and I, I don't know if it was the 90s or the early 2000s when they were filling barrels up with water. Like, this is, yeah, it's a real thing, man. Is, it, a, is it a real, real thing, thing, though? Like, is no, it's, real it's thing? legit a real thing, and it's across Canada. People are still dealing with stuff that was stolen, like, in the 90s. It's like it's syrup, so, like like yeah, old school syrup that was because there was a big, if you remember that in the 90s, 80s, and 90s. There were these big maple syrup heists where people would get yes. take delivery of these barrels of maple it, syrup. It lasts forever. And they'd tap it, and we just water would pour out of it. And people were like, yeah. Sacre bleu. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my maple syrup? And it's you're like, just uh, like gold. It keeps its value, and it doesn't go bad. Seriously. Cool. Yeah. So it's, it's just a commodity like everything else. And in, and in your world, like real maple syrup goes oh. into some of the best barbecue, right? All you, all you need is a rack of ribs, man, and I'll change your life with just a couple couple teaspoons of maple syrup, man. Why is Aaron being all quiet? He apparently has the same connection. <laughs> <laughs> no comments at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay so what's it, like are these families like are they mob families that run the maple syrup industry how does this work well you know the french man they're all connected so it is what it is so i don't know He's... you don't want to talk about it you just want to <laughs> want to sell you out i, I want details you're like yeah. i'm not giving you any fucking details it's That's my it. it's my off-market if you syrup spend enough them. time in alberta i've been here since 2006 uh yeah. the one thing that you will be surprised if you go out and spend any time with, with you know if you leave your house yeah. You'll eventually meet someone that cooks meat um, that uh, burns their garbage on a fairly regular basis in their backyard. 
<laughs> and also has a contact with somebody that can get you meat. Yeah. And listen, it, you don't want to ask any questions, but the guy will just show up at your door and you will pay a third of what you would normally pay at Safeway. And then the guy will leave really quickly. Hey, can yeah. I tell you guys something? I get <laughs> this. You've got story. a meat guy. <laughs> <laughs> and my meat guy Amazing. also owns he also owns a disposal company and i'm like of course he does <laughs> oh i know your meat guy yeah he's your meat guy too if you would I, be out here if you lived here he'd be your meat guy and it was that's funny exactly because it was what like, he said i, I like, asked him if he would ship it to alberta and he said i'm not coming all the way out there <laughs> so dude this is a true story so my meat guy calls me and he's like hey i got a meat and he's like, do you need some Easter beef? I go, I sure do. He goes, the same place? I'm like, absolutely. There's a parking lot around the corner from my house where we do the trade-off. No meat. way. I shit you <laughs> not. And it's the best. Meet the guy's a butcher. He's got a private family farm. I know the guy well. Really good dude. Oh, awesome. He's awesome. one of those guys. And he's like, and, and so it feels a little like, you know, it, it feels like I'm feels like I'm doing it's funny because it feels like I'm doing something wrong all the time when I go meet a Mel for meat. But that's how this business works. Right. A lot of yeah. people don't understand that you can yeah. get great meat, but you got to know who to talk to, which makes brings me to my point. Aaron, where do you get your meat for meat? Like you must be able to source that kind of stuff. Or do you get it from Mel's guy? No, uh, I don't get it from meat. Mel's guy. <laughs> uh, we got our own guy. Um, uh, we actually use a uh, you know a massive distributor, uh, Centennial Meats. Mm -hmm. But the brisket that we're using is Sterling Silver Triple A. And so, I mean, aside from uh, like Brown Lake Wagyu or anything like that, it's basically you know like the best brisket that you can get. And like we go through so many briskets in a week. Yeah. Like let's uh, fast forward to summer. It's the second Saturday of Fringe and uh, Edmonton Fringe Festival, huge here in Edmonton. Um, and we'll go through 33 briskets just oh. for that Saturday service. That's serious. We'll go through nearly how 200 racks brisket, of Like ribs. how much brisket do you go through a year at meat? And by the way, uh, world oh, famous brisket at, at meat in Edmonton, by the way. How many, how many, how many, oh, how many my brisket God. do you go through a year? Uh, a metric fuck ton. <laughs> 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 yeah I, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now but i can assure you there's uh been uh a lot of cows sacrificed for yeah. the uh good eats at meat so yeah yeah um yeah. I, I have a i have a question for um aaron and, and mel because you guys have been here a long time um we approached grease fire when we got everything put together and we, and we put a plan in place we got a one sheet. We started sending it out, and we got some interest from. By the way, uh, Aaron, the guy that did the logo, great job. Yeah, I, I can't believe. Yeah, that. so too. He, I would like to together. shout him out. His yeah. name is uh, Josh Nadeau. He is the uh, lead to ta tattoo artist at Studio Eight Tattoos in Sherwood Park. So cool. shout out to you, Josh. You're an absolute legend. And he's yeah. uh, one of my dearest friends too. So yeah, we literally, oh, I yeah. think yesterday morning we were having a conversation about a logo and then you sent it to me like two hours later. And then three hours later, I think I had t-shirts up on the merch page. <laughs> um, for so, sure. Yeah, that, that happened sure. really quick, but no, um, sea change is now, uh, the sponsor for grease fire. And I want to thank Ian and Nick and the gang from sea change, but I was trying to put it into perspective for, for Dean here, um, about, sea change and it's like I, I i told him i said listen there is a huge microbrewery culture in in alberta and if you it's sit insane. there it's insane if you put yeah, it leaves the country list, per capita like the microbrews in to your point lock uh in in alberta are widely considered like some of the best most innovative microbrews yeah. in the world not just in canada yeah 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 so it, and and it's 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 unfortunate that you and I, I don't maybe this maybe this is going to change soon but it's unfortunate that people in Ontario can't get their hands on this beer it's amazing, um, but where do they stand on the echelon um, of of like sort of the position the marketing ladder would you put them at the top at top of the rung sea change as far as microbreweries go you guys oh hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like one of our oldest uh, breweries here in Edmonton is, uh, is Alley Cat. They've been around forever. They've been doing an amazing job at stepping in their game, you know, all of that. But 
sea change for as young as a company as they are. Their marketing is absolutely unbelievable. All their yeah. branding, they make absolutely incredible beer. Um, they just opened up another location at Cross Iron Mills, uh, just out of, outside of Calgary. And uh, yeah, man, they are absolutely killing it. Yeah, they're they're yeah. aggressive. Their branding is aggressive, and that's exactly mm-hmm. what you need, especially in our market, right? It's uh, it's re- it's really good. It's old English tattoo style kind of stuff. It, yeah. It just, it, you throw it on a beer can, you want the beer can, you throw it on a hat, you want the hat. Like it, it's a genius marketing campaign and their locations are just so chill. Like you, you can't beat that either. It's, it's super too, chill. Yeah. yeah for sure. It's it's, per, it's a perfect, perfect vibe all the way around the brand. So the, the wolf is, is my favorite. What's yours? What's yours, Aaron? I got to say the wolf too. Yeah. I love the I gotta wolf. Say, you know, I, yeah. it's not a crazy high ABV, but Man, that thing goes down like nobody's business. It's so good. That's my summer beer. You know, you can tell that this is an Alberta microbrew because the first one's 8.1%. Next one's 6.2%. <laughs> yeah, Mal, yeah C. Favorite? James doesn't fuck around with that. That's for sure. No. Yeah. yeah what, what's your favorite, Mal? Oh, it's the Prairie Ferry. Yeah. It's literally, yeah. it's, I'm pretty sure they named that after me. Not a big deal, but um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I've got Ian from Sea Change on the podcast actually in a week next Friday, and I brought that up with him. I said to I said to Ian, I said I think Mel thinks that Prairie Prairie was 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 him was based on him, and yeah. Ian goes, "Why is that?" And I'm like, "I'm not sure. We'll have to we'll have to deal with that when we get you in the same room." I, I again. dig into that in I a podcast paths. or therapy. One of the two. Yeah, I cross paths with them at a bush party when they were in high school, and I was wearing exactly this in my high heels, and that's when it came. But that's that's how it. So, uh, um, yeah. what what was the name of the band? that they were in that Ian was in owls. Was it owls by nature? <laughs> oh shit. I can't remember. You remember that? I can't remember. Like this, yeah. th- th- these guys that, that put this, this, this brewery together are local musicians. Dean. It's such no, I- a fucking great story. So like, like they've got a couple of locations in live music. They've got a real chill vibe. They're, yeah. and they're, they're changing the micro brew game. And I said this to Lachlan the other day, I'm like, dude, all the cool beers and the cool drinks, like the cool micros came out after I stopped drinking. Now I dabble a little bit. Like I'll have a pint here to see if it's interesting. Yeah, I do. I'll have like an old fashioned with a kind of an interesting bourbon, you know, a nice little orange twist and stuff like that. So like one of the things I said to Lachlan is is, uh, as soon as you guys get grease fire started, I'm going to come for one of those tapings and just try the beers that are coming out of sea change. Like just go to meet, try the beers, sit there. And it's fucking crazy because you know, we've spent like so three good. years literally living in our houses and not getting out. And now I've got this like desire to go and test different parts of this country. And Alberta is one of awesome. those places. You know what I mean? Like Alberta's one. And we want to do this. We want to bring an RV. We want to come to Alberta. We want to see how the people of Alberta barbecue. We want to see the micro craft areas. We want to talk to people in business that are changing the experience of dining and the experience of alcohol, because that's what this is, right? That's what that's what Greeks fire is kind of all about. It's an educational piece. But it's giving people that experience of the experience of barbecuing with your friends while you're enjoying this. That's what I'm getting out yeah. of Grease Fire. That you're going to have to hold Lachlan's hand for a fucking at least eight episodes so he doesn't kill himself. <laughs> There's that. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, I also dabble in alcohol just yeah, every night. Know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Mel, yeah. go ahead. No Dean, way. I, I get excited here. Really? You love? You definitely. You backed off on, on, on the drinking and whatnot, right? And you're excited to come to Alberta. Uh, yeah. A very common term that all Albertans know, but most people from out east are not quite familiar with our, our terminology, is just the tip, right? You come down, you just have one. Just have one, buddy. You're going to wake up in a snowbank so quick. Alberta's going to chew you up. Like, I cannot wait, buddy. That's it. I like just one old fashioned. Yeah, don't worry. I'll make you an old fashioned, man. It'll end up. Where's your pants, dude? What, what, who brought this guy? That's, dude, it's not a successful trip out to see the Grease Fire crew. Mel That's Schmiller, it. Aaron Pakin from Meat, Dark Side of the Grill, the unemployed, now recently employed Lachlan Cross. Unless when I get out there, I don't question every decision I ever made in my life. <laughs> then it's you're not. on to the now. That's a trip. That's yeah. that's exactly what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. where you go and out we, and you're like, I got to get involved in the culture. I got to see what I'm doing. Like the last time we had Mel on, Aaron, Mel was on our podcast about a year ago, and he started the podcast. He says, "Hang on, guys, I got to get a beverage." 
and he shows up with a flat of white claw and he killed almost yeah. all of them in an hour long podcast. And I'm like, I want to hang out with that guy, but I might question my life decisions after. I was going to do that today, but it's like 9 a.m. So <laughs> yeah, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a white clock going first thing in the morning. I was keeping it under wraps a little bit, but I mean, <laughs> whatever. We're all friends here, so. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's now 10. Hey, it's Good Friday. Yeah. Might as well start drinking at some point in time, right? Absolutely. Hell, how many of you had? We should jump into this just for a second. Yeah. The irony that today is our first taping, mm -hmm. and I totally forgot that it was Good Friday. Uh, one of us, at least, you know, isn't a heathen. Um, I have to I have to call my priest later today and just see if I can get a pass for the day because this is crazy, man. This is I never really thought about it, but today we're not drinking or eating meat. <laughs> yeah, we are. Right? So like what a good day to yeah, perfect. So let's this uh, is like the most heathenistic day of any of you guys are Catholic. You that, can't tell yeah, anybody at it. church what you're doing today. You're getting drunk, you're recording a television yeah. show. And you're cooking meat yeah. and eating meat on camera on Good Friday. You're supposed to be just doing fish and shutting the fuck up. I'm just That's letting it. you know. So, so for all yeah. of your listeners that are, that are in the same canoe as me and they're Catholic, right? We do have a priest we can call and just say sorry, which is just awesome. Just ask I for love. forgiveness. It's a good religion to be in, right? But I get my quick hall pass, and today I'll be okay. I'll make it up next year, I promise. So that's <laughs> but a boom, but a big baby. That's it. I love it. I love well, that's going to be way, our one-year anniversary show, so yeah. you might need a double pass on that one, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to do, um, like, pre-approve the Hail Marys, like proactive Hail Marys. Before that's you it, exactly. Start. Can yeah, I use exactly. a printer? You mind if I? Yeah, that's. Uh, by the way, <laughs> I also want to thank Brody. LaPlante for um, helping us film this today too. He's got a company by the name of Visuals by Mind, and he's done some really, really cool projects over the years. He's he's been um, he's he's done some television stuff for uh, for for bands for for hockey teams and uh, really cool guys. So we're looking forward to th this thing is going to look really good because of Brody and oh, yeah. Visuals by Mind. Yeah. yeah, let it be said that this is a pro production. Like you've got one of the world's best barbecuers. You've got one of the world's best restaurant tours. Uh, everybody here is a character. Everybody is as equal, equally as good looking. So no one's going to show anybody up. Just letting you know. Uh, but yeah. no, this is going to, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's lock. And then there's lock. So that's yeah. awesome. I have a question for you. <laughs> Guys, how are you going to like uh, CGI teeth on Lachlan for this show? <laughs> Dog's teeth. It is what it is. <laughs> he doesn't have uh, TV teeth. Neither do well, I. Yeah. I was poor growing up, and my sister got the braces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we got to thank Ian and the gang from Sea Change yeah. for jumping on board as uh, our official sponsor of Grease Fire. I don't know when we're going to get this thing out, but I will uh, keep people appraised of our sort of progress with it Surprised. once we yep. tape this thing there's going to be an editing process and and that kind of thing but i'm yep. hoping that with before the end of april um i'd like to uh i'd like to have this thing out and 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 available for people to see the other thing that we're going to do too is we're going to have we're going to sit down today probably and, and and come up with some concepts as to um the, you know next tapings and we've talked about maybe doing one at meet i think we should do one at sea change uh and mel brought up going under a bridge and, and cooking a brisket, right? So, Perfect. yeah, so there's there's definitely, um, we're, we're going to be creative. Maybe we'll go to an Elks game and do a tailgate and uh, and tape that, right? All I know um, is there that will like, be, whatever, there, I, whatever, whatever I expect from Lachlan Cross needs to be, needs to be handled by, and I love you, dude. I think you can handle the media part of this. Do not let him near any of the ingredients. You're gonna have to hold his hand. No way. No, I'm gonna be cooking by the yeah. end of this 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 show. I'm gonna be an expert. Is that the right, goal, guys? Is that the goal? Well, well last night you actually uh, asked me what the fucking immersion blender was. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and then he showed me a picture, and I'm like, oh, that's what I used to cut up weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, fucking obliterated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh guys i can't wait that's right lock we got you yeah <laughs> the, the, hold their hold his hand uh keep him safe don't let him near anything sharp uh mel schmiller dark side <laughs> of the grill you can go and find him on uh anywhere on instagram 
He's he's a throwback. I love the man. Aaron, just a pleasure to meet you. Uh, folks, the restaurant is called Meat. Uh, Mel is the celebrity griller. Aaron is the celebrity restaurant tour. The show is going to be called Grease Fire. We will keep you appraised of it. And if you're in, in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and you want to have a terrific meal and you want to taste barbecue like you haven't tasted before, the restaurant's name is Meat. Uh, Google it. Uh, they've got incredible reviews. We just showed some pictures yeah. in the inside of it, too. Uh, go and experience what meat has to offer. Yeah, dude, I can't wait to come out there and try your food as well and to spend some time with you, Mel. Guys, we'll keep you posted uh, as to your progress. But great to meet you both, Mel. Great to have you back. And Aaron, really nice to finally meet you as well. Dark side great of the to meet you, too. Any of his socials. All, All right. right. Dark, Dark side of the grill. Thanks, Mel. Thanks for spending time with us today. Thanks, Aaron. Really appreciate it. Your friends are awesome. Yeah, I, I'm really looking. For, we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it's uh, and again, we didn't even get into it, but Aaron was actually on a cooking show, and um, and so has some experience with with the whole production side of things. Came second. Damn it, he's going to kill me. But I forget the name, the name of the show. Oh, well, he's still here. Let's get him on real quick. What's the name of the show, Aaron? What was the name of the show? Fire Masters. Fire Masters. Oh, you came second on Fire yeah. Masters. Yeah, so uh, yeah, out of like um, you know the three main competitors, I was able to beat uh, all of them out. Then I went against um, uh, one of the judges, Andy Husbands. Uh, he has um, you know a huge um, uh, restaurant scene like down in Boston. Anyway, he was absolutely amazing. This close to winning the ten Gs. This close, mm -hmm. and, and it was funny when I was watching my episode. Mm -hmm. I was like, it was it was a year from filming till it actually aired it's called hot pursuit by the way you can find it on stack tv food network whatever yeah. and uh i was on the edge of my seat and the production was so good i'm like did i fucking win <laughs> 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 yeah i'm like am i gonna win and then i looked at my bank account and i realized that i didn't win so there we go <laughs> you already knew how it ended they shot it so well like, hey, yeah fuck, i can't wait to see if this guy wins you're like well that's <laughs> Yeah, it was That's pretty funny. amazing. Oh, man. Well, right. dude, you, so your old hat at this is going to be a great show. Grease Fire. Thanks for popping back in, Aaron. Really appreciate it, brother. Yeah, have a yeah. good day, brother. Right. Have a good day, man. Nice to meet you. Talk to All you soon. Right. Anytime. Yeah, dude, I like that guy. I want... See, here's where my mind goes when I talk to guys like him. I'm like, we need something like that here. We need a meat restaurant in Toronto. Yeah. We got Antler, but we need like something that's not quite so... Fuck meat is vegans. very traditional barbecue, right? Like yeah. you go the, the menu and, and a lot of people do um, one of one of the ideas that I want to do for, for an episode is and I don't even know if we can do this, but um, uh, shut it down at like go down there at like two o'clock in the morning and film an episode in the restaurant. They just they, you can't do it during the day. They're, they're too busy. But if we could do it in the evening and I want to recreate the the wings that Aaron and Mel did last summer for for charity they sold them for a month and it was like a feature menu item mm -hmm. dean those wings the, the best fucking wings i think i've ever had and it was a collaboration between the two of them and that's where i think this started because we we were hanging out at meat like once a week we were going to the restaurant to have those wings and aaron came up with this dip like a this ranch peppercorn Mm. But it was spicy as oh my mm. god, those wings were so amazing. Were they big they, roasters too, or are they those little wings? Probably no, they not were, because they were they massive. Give a shit. Yeah, they were massive, and they yes. raised, if I'm not mistaken, they raised over 2,500 bucks for, for for charity just for selling those wings. Wow, the profits from the wings that, and I'd yeah. like to recreate those for one of the episodes of uh, of Grease Fire. So. It's amazing. I was just thinking about this because <clears throat> those guys are pros, right? Like Mel's yeah. one of the greatest barbecuers in the world. He barbecues for Burt Kreischer and Bill Burr, the, all the comedians and the biggest comedians in the world. Like hangs out with them, talks to him. He's got a great podcast called After the Cook, uh, which you can get anywhere. I think on YouTube, there's a bunch of great episodes. Is how many people uh, out there have these really cool brands, good ideas, and ideas like this, like Grease Fire, die by the wayside. Like die by the highway of good ideas, right? Like it's you know, and, and you've got these people that have like legitimately an interest in it that want to bring people along to say, hey, listen, we want to share with you these things that we do that we love doing. Right. And then a guy like you comes along. He's like, hey, I'm, I've got a real interest in this. That's the currency of content now is yeah. having that vulnerable experience where a guy like you is like, I'm going to hook up with these dudes who are the best in the world at something. 
and they're going to teach me about something I should know how to do. Right. I was joking around about how men just are born with the fucking knowledge of barbecuing for all of you people out there that are going to want to take me behind the woodshed for making a misogynist statement. Barbecue is like anything else. Barbecue is like fucking one of those fun things that we get a chance to do cook over an open flame. It's just kind of primal. It's cool. It's fun. But it is an art. Dude, it is. You're, you're going to you know get what? in the ring with artists. I'm glad Bush you fight. made that distinction because, because you know what? I, a lot of guys are like, I'm really good at barbecue. Like, and they buy the smokers and they get the pellet thing and all that. And, and you know what? I've been to, I don't know, a dozen parties in the last couple of years where buddies are barbecuing. And it's always good. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. It's meat. Right. But then you have somebody's cooking that is that next level. And there's just, there's just this, this next level. And both these guys are that next level. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's an attention to detail and it, you're right. There is an art. And the thing with Mel, if you follow him on, if go to his Instagram page, cause he's got a really cool, like, and it, and he updates that thing daily, but you'll, you'll see him cooking anything and everything on his Instagram and it's all like open flame. And when you like sit alligator down and you cooks have, alligator, he'll just throw a, a lot. Alligator and grill. Yeah. 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 Like when yeah. you sit down and you have a meal that Mel has prepared, um, it, totally different. you're going to remember that it's, yeah. it, it's, it's going to change you. Like, and it's you experience might experience too, right? Like that's why I, I can't wait for the show. It's, yeah. it's like, it's an experience. Like it's what people do when they get together. It's like Canadiana, it's Americana. It's all those things where you get together with everybody you throw a cooler in the middle of the yard. Remember yeah. that when you're a kid, yeah. you fucking throw a cooler in the middle of the yard and everybody and comes fun. over and they bring a lawn chair. It's a hang. They bring a couple of snacks and then the, then the, someone starts the grill and you're like, yeah, this is that feeling, that backyard feeling we used to get when we leave our houses and communicate yeah. with people in the summer. So I think to, for me, it's like, it's tied. Barbecue is like tied to experiences, fun times, a couple of cocktails. Yeah. Everybody has a nice day, that kind of stuff. Right. And so for them, like they become heroes to individuals that love that feeling, that want to create that feeling. And you see a lot of people like, you know, that, 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 that are celebrities that'll, that'll have a craft table or have it catered. Fun people would rather have a barbecue pit master feeding people brisket and making well, you that can an hire experience. Them out, right? Yeah, totally. Like send him a yeah. note, send him a DM on Instagram. If you want to have him over for, for a party, um, it'll cost you, but he does catering events. I, I remember one time we were going back and forth. We were texting and, and, uh, and I think we were going to, at one point we were going to hook up and have, I don't know, beers or something. He's like, I can't Bert's in town. I'm like, Bert, Bert Kreischer. Yeah. Bert's in town. He's doing the jube and I'm doing, I'm doing the barbecue for, for his for his crew so he has a he has a unit called elvira that he built himself he welded the whole damn thing together he slapped a bunch of meat and 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 in ingredients in the truck in coolers he went to the back of the jube and he started barbecuing and before that before they went on on the stage the whole crew ate and he fed he fed bert kreischer's crew he's done that a couple of times actually um, in the States too, when, when they've been close, Bert will send him a text, go, where are you? And Mel's traveling constantly, but that's just kind of, you're right. Right. Like if you've got the means, why mm -hmm. not bring Mel over to your place to cook for you? <laughs> right. How yeah. many guys you got on the crew? Oh, we got 25. We're rolling 25 deep. Okay. Done. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he does. I'm looking at yeah, his dark side so of the cool. grill Instagram channel right now. The uh, Bert Kreischer's Instagram, as a matter of fact. And Bert Kreischer had him cater his dressing room and yeah. he brought all, all the fucking, all the, all the, all the sausages, all the brisket, brought it back backstage. It's like nine o'clock at night. And Bert and his entire crew now have their shirts off in this video with Mel. <laughs> yeah. uh, and they're just eating barbecue. Everybody's shirtless. Yeah. Like people yeah. don't realize how important barbecue guys are to here's them with all of their shirts off again barbecue guys are to celebrities uh because they don't understand how much celebrities love the experience like they don't that's get mel's that's life really cool. yeah it is that's, that's it? yeah that's going to be the biggest oh, issue is that we're we're going to have trouble finding times to actually film film grease fire i said <laughs> let's try to get six in this year okay guys
<laughs> and he's like, yeah, I got to go cook and party with Burt Kreischer today. This is from Burt Kreischer's like, here he is with Dark Side of the Grill eating his fucking barbecue <laughs> shirtless. Every guy in the background has got their shirt off. I love yeah. it, dude. That's I love that crew. I love that group of guys. And it's a yeah. different cr- group of people, right? That are able to fucking go, hey, yeah, we don't really give a shit. We're going to eat a bunch of fat guys eat barbecue yeah. with their shirts off. No ego with a guy like Mel. That's what I love about him. It's going to be a great yeah. show. Look forward to it. Yeah. Brought to you by Sea Change. And uh, speaking of brought to you by the Locker Room Retro Replay of the Day is brought to you by Arden Roof Systems. Go check out the webpage, ArdenRoofSystems.com. Sign up for the golf tournament, which is happening on July 5th. We're actually going to meet the title sponsor, Pioneer Golf Company, on Tuesday, Dean, on the podcast. Yeah. We're going to yeah, have I'm them really on. really excited to meet them because I am a big golfer. And if you haven't been on a golf trip that's been sponsored or been arranged for you by a legit company like Pioneer Golf, who are the title sponsor for the Art and Roof Systems Charity Golf Tournament, you haven't lived. You haven't lived. So you can help out a really good charity, the Stollery Child Life Program, by signing up for the golf tournament um, on the webpage. But um, uh, he's also still got some openings for some sponsorship opportunities. So if you want to be a part of it from a business perspective, let him know. And today's retro replay of the day, the locker room retro replay of the day, is actually about Mel and Dark Side of the Grill. The Locker Room, lock room retro, 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 retro Play. On Friday, right after the show, the three of us went to Mel, Dark Side of the Grill's place. Yeah. And he barbecued some stuff for us. We had a couple of drinks, sat down, ate some really good barbecue. Follow him on Instagram. He's a great follow. Right? Dark Side of the Grill. We were sitting around having beers, and I... Don't know what it is. I usually am pretty good at sniffing out anyone that's lying or fibbing or telling a, but I I can't do it with Mel. Because <laughs> I don't think he's fibbing. I don't think he is either. Like the whole. But he has been, he's messed with me a couple but he, of times. He's a storyteller. So I'm sure there's, a, I mean, you're familiar with exaggeration. Yeah, you know, you, you know, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. So I think there's obviously some of that. He was telling me about using udder cream. I guess farmers use it on, um, when they're milking cows, they uh-huh. use it on udders. And apparently he has been using it on his nut sack. <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking about how not only is does it get rid of wrinkles and it's nice soft and supple but that it also <laughs> tightens him up <laughs> and he was dead serious like i could not tell if he was messing with me to the point where Posted it on Twitter, okay, and that did not help at all <laughs> because some people were like, "No, no, no, he's messing with you," and then other people were like, "No, no, that there is—I st- don't know what he's using, but there are creams out there that are in the same vein. Yeah. Like there was one called Bag Bomb or something that they posted, <laughs> and apparently it's very similar to the uh, the cream that they use on udders at farms for cows." So that there's no chafing and that kind of stuff. Yeah, see, everything I find looking it up, and I literally typed in utter cream for testicles just to make sure. It says, yeah, you can do it, but nothing talks about a tightening. It just talks He's about saying if that you're it's- chapped, you're chafing, anything like that. If the skin is a little rough, um, but nothing, nothing on there says that it will take them from dangling down to the water and then bring them back into your body. Again, I'm still very confused by whether or not there is a product out there that is similar to this and whether or not it actually tightens. <laughs> Am I opening up the wrong door here? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you'll learn some. The last time we talked about farm-related like medications and things like that, I yeah. did hear from a couple of farmers, right? Like people that actually... Is this a thing? Utter cream for cows. If you use it on your testes, does it tighten them up? Asking for a friend. By the way, I did open a door I didn't need to open with Mel. Because <laughs> guess what he sent me? What? Pictures? He did. He sent me. It was nuts. <laughs> and Before and afters? <laughs> no, he just sent a picture of... Yeah. Didn't need to see Here that this morning. Your friendship's on a new level now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Earlier we were talking about Mel from Dark Side of the Grill. He mentioned that he uses a certain product Utter on green. his... <laughs> and we're phoning him to find out if he was kidding or not. Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> you ruined my day That's today. the most low-key I've ever heard you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how are we doing today, boys? Doing good. I have a question. Right we were at your house on Friday... And then yes. Lachlan and I left, and Jimmy stayed for a little bit longer. And he's claiming that you exposed yourself to him. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say exposed, but it's really low. I don't know. Like you may have seen. Something. It just happened. Know. Like he came out of the house in the in his bathrobe, ready for the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> that did happen. Yeah. So there's that. I saw something <laughs> this morning. Yeah. This morning. There you, there you go. See? Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. trying to show that utter cream does work it to does tighten work, the boys. Yeah. Here. Yeah, it does, I don't it need does to work. see it. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm post. Oh, hold on. You can't post <laughs> it was that. one of those d- uh, disappearing photos. Oh, that's you smart. can only see it <laughs> once. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> that's not his it's first a good rodeo. Thing. I got a that's screenshot it. of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's my question to you. Mel. Yes. Okay. Yes. You brought up something on Friday when we were taping our last barbecue tip with you. Brought to you by okay. Backyard Girls. Yes. That you use utter cream on your testicles, Correct. which is a cream that um, farmers use for chafing when they're milking cows. Correct. And you claimed that not only does it make your undercarriage soft and supple, that it gets rid of wrinkles and that it also tightens them up. Yes. Absolutely no one is <laughs> backing you up. Backing you up. No, no, I, I, I totally believe that because I was lying through my teeth. There See, that's go. what there I... There we go. So you don't use utter cream on your... Absolutely not. I'm an adult. That's so weird. <laughs> I thought you were serious. <laughs> well, Grant, did you? I did thought you? you were serious, yeah. Locke, if you're going to buy it, man, I'm going to sell it all day long. <laughs> <Sure. it. laughs> all right. Oh, there goes a, a wasted Locke, Twitter post. Locke spent a lot of money on utter cream this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and he canceled his uh, sack jack surgery. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't believe you. I think you put something on there that farmers you, use. You farmers never know. Use. It's called horse. Horseradish, come on, Ukrainian. <laughs> Don't put horseradish on your nuts. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Well, go about your day. Right on, guys. Dark side of the grill, Mel. Thank you. Hey, have a great day, guys. Right. See, ya. see, I can't tell. I can't I read him. He was being real. I yeah. cannot read that. Now, man. I wonder if he actually listens to the Top Gun soundtrack when he's getting it on now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I believe. <laughs> yeah, I, I, dude. It, like I, I wouldn't have been fooled by that. I was, you know what? If you spend time with him, he'll get into it, and and I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see if he could convince you of something because he does, he 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 likes to like throw little odd little things out there like that, and and I actually still to this day, I'm not sure if he's if he's like if I went downstairs and saw a, a tube of utter cream on the table in his basement, yeah. wouldn't surprise me. <clears throat> it just sounds to me like you guys got drunk. He showed someone his nuts. And Jimmy, that was that was the excuse. Yeah. It was his, that was his doorway in. Wasn't wrinkled, and yeah, and he was like utter cream. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like Mel and you and your two buddies got hammered, ate some barbecue. Mel showed some people's balls and needed utter cream as an excuse to get out of it. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. All right. That was a good one today. Thanks, thanks for doing that. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you guys got a chance to meet uh, the boys from Grease Fire. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Looking forward to the show. Grease Fire is the name of the television show. Why do you have a shit eating grin on your face right now? No, because everyone misses Fat Dean. And I, <laughs> even if Fat Dean was still here today, this would still be happening. Gave it a good run. I had about forty oatmeal cookies last night for dessert. I'd be heading back there. You got in. You got into the bag, did you? Yeah, I got into the bag. Yeah, well, you know, it was a nice indica, nine o'clock. I'm like, I might as well eat a bag of cookies. All right, one more thing before you um, sign me off. Monster Pro Wrestling is back Friday, April 5th. We've got Meltdown. It is at the Alberta 
Avenue Community Hall, where they always are again, Friday, April 5th. If you want to get on the locker room MPW guest list, the VIP guest list, send me a note on my socials and I'll hook you up. All right. All right I got buddy. some spots left to fill. Yeah. Let me know if you want to go. All right. That's Appreciate next Friday. It. As always, brought to you by Thank Arden you, Roof Systems. Go to ardenroofsystems.com uh, for more details. Lachlan Claras and the host of the locker room. Uh, brought to you by our friends at Art and Roof Systems and our friends at Sea Change, uh, partners in Grease Fire as well. Thanks to Mel Schmiller for being in the show today. Thanks to our friend Aaron for meet in Edmond for stopping by. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, sorry, Monday. We'll be back on Monday, and we will have the young ladies from Muse on the program with us also next week. Uh, great little podcast with Unlearn 16. Joanna's going to be by to talk to us a little bit about education and how we're educating each other. Uh, and uh, we've got more of this next week. And we're also going to follow uh, the the trials and tribulations of Diddy. We've got some people uh, coming up from um, the United States to help us kind of understand what's going on with Diddy, what's happening with him. Uh, we're going to follow that thing. Uh, and it is a mess. Uh, we have not gotten a chance to talk about it. It's weird. You can't even really talk about it. I don't feel like talking about it because it's so greasy. But we'll get to that next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Good Friday, everybody. We'll talk to you, uh, I believe, on Monday when we're back with the Girls from Muse. Again, brought to you by our friends at Muse, Muse Massage Spa. 1290 Finch Avenue West. Upload their new podcast called Muse on the Mic. Episode 30 is out now where they're talking about deep, dark secrets at the spa. So you can check that out. These are educators, sexologists, and advocates for the sex work industry. And they've got a great podcast and a body rub parlor, the best in Canada, musemassagespawn.com. Go there today. Ask them for the Dean Blundell special. Yeah, that's right. You get a special. Ask Emily or Riley. DM them. Go to their new website, musemassagespawn.com. Check out your muses. Check out all the things you can do while you're there. And they've recently renovated. It's beautiful. It's like, kind of want to go there and have a sleep, to be honest with you. It looks so nice and peaceful. Uh, but check them out, musemassagespa.com. Also brought to you by our friends at uh, Can Torque, making rugged, hardworking torque wrenches for 20 years out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Industrial tool experts for 20 years, every solution under one roof, tool rental, calibration services, repairs, custom fabrication, uh, torque wrenches for every need that you can't find a torque wrench solution for. Any bolting solution, they have it and they'll make it for you. They've been there before. They'll be there again. And they are number one in the industry industry as far as finding those torque wrench solutions. So if you're in heavy industry, nuclear, railroad, forestry, doesn't matter, cantorque.com. Go to cantorque.com today. Check out Colin's brand new website, his brand new podcast. Check out all of his products and services. Uh, and you yourself can be doing business with one of the most proud Canadian manufacturing companies in the country, cantorque.com. Also brought to you by our friends at Rome Auto. I use them. I'm a customer. Go to rome.auto today if you're looking for a new vehicle, whether it's uh, monthly, whether it's for a year, three months, six months, it doesn't matter. Uh, 4.9 stars out of Google. Listen, these guys are awesome. They're featured in Blog TO, Yahoo Finance, Benzinga, CBC's done a great piece on them. They're changing the car economy game. If you want to drive a car on your own terms, get a car subscription. Don't buy. You get insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance included, everything except fuel. No lease or interest payments. You simply pay as you go. Flexible monthly plans, plans starting in a month. Home delivery totally available. Their valet service is incredible. Uh, and the economy of car buying is a pain in the ass. The second you buy a car, you might not get the full history of it. Uh, you're going to drive it off the lot if it's brand new. You're going to lose all kinds of appreciation the second you leave if it's a brand new car. You can do this monthly right here, and you never have to worry about mitigating that risk of financial loss because it's a car subscription company. Rome.auto. Rome.auto. Rome with Dean is your promo code. Sign up. You'll get $150 off your first month at Rome.auto. Don't buy. Subscribe to your brand new vehicle. Any vehicle you want, browse them now at Rome.auto. Again, go to Rome.auto and use promo code Rome with Dean. You'll find yourself in a brand new vehicle. Lucky you. And you can just give it back when you're done. That's the best part. Uh, and also, Giving you your agency back. The people at Fact Check want to do that. You can't believe almost anything you read, see, hear, feel, or touch that comes from the internet. Uh, we want to verify that information. The people at Fact Check have a disinformation killer. You can join their beta test team right now. Go to factcheck.io, F A K T C H E K.io. If you want to believe in what you read, see, hear, feel, and touch on the internet, and if you want to verify that what you read or what you looked at was actually accurate, including the narrative, and it came from a place that you can trust. The only information you need comes from my friends at factcheck.io who have built the most robust prototype to kill disinformation from a variety of sources to put the agency of truth back in the hands of the reader. That's what they've done. 
They've done it for other industries. They're doing it now for you. So go to factcheck.io today and sign up for their beta test program, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io, factcheck.io, information killers, disinformation, disarmers. That is what Fact Check is doing for you. Scientists, journalists from around the world have gotten together to reimagine how to keep you safe from the bullshit that you see on a daily basis and how to get agency over what you read back to you. Go to factcheck.io today. Have a great day, everybody. Great long weekend. Happy Good Friday, depending on how you celebrate. And if you do, good for you. Take nothing away from what you believe. Go have fun with your family today. Go be human. See you Monday. Bye.